Welcome back. Today's video is about integration by substitution. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a brief tutorial on how to use integration by substitution. Also, it's part one, so I'm basically just gonna to stick to indefinite integrals in this to keep things a, a little bit simple. I'm gonna teach you some techniques, uh, how to know what U is in the integral if it's not given to you. And I have about five examples that I'm going to go through that involve different techniques, ones with E, one with quotients, one with products, and another one with trigonometry. So let's dive in. Okay, so I think the best way to start this is just to work through an example and unpack this expression as we go. So we're looking for, uh, if we have an integral and there was a function of u and the derivative of u is also in that function, then we can rewrite that as an integral of f of u with respect to u. So let's just look at this indefinite integral below. So we have the integral of 2x squared plus 5 all squared times 4x with respect to dx. Okay, now we don't have a rule for the integral of a product uh, in integration. We did for differentiation, but not integration. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use substitution. So we can see here that what I've underlined, if we labeled that as u, so let u equal 2x squared plus 5, then the derivative of u would be du by dx, which would equal 4x. Now this, that's exactly what we want. We wanted to get the derivative of u in the question. So this is a perfect setup for integration by substitution. So what would you do next? Well, you can now split the du by dx up and say that du is equal to 4x times dx. Now what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get what is in the question. You're trying to match exactly what is in the question here. So if I go up and I see 4x dx, right, I want to switch out that 4x dx with this 4x dx. And we want to write everything in terms of u. So this is u. So we're going to switch out the 4x dx with u. So now we have the integral of, now remember, that thing in the bracket originally we called u, right? So it's u squared, right? So it's u squared. And now the 4x dx has been swapped with the du. So now we have an integral just in terms of u. And we can easily do that. That is just add one to the power and divide by the new power. So we add one and divide by the new one. And because it's an indefinite integral, we have plus c. So you can just replace the u back in, which was 2x squared plus 5. And that is all cubed over 3 plus c. Hence the name reverse chain rule, because if you actually look very carefully, what we did is we just undid the chain rule. Um, so when you see a question, how do you know what's u? Well, I just wrote this little bubble up here. I'd say use this as a, uh, like a rough guide that if you have some parentheses or brackets, then the value inside will be u. That really is uh, the root of something. Um, the value underneath the square root will be u. That is really because you can rewrite the root. Let's say you had, let's say, the cube root of something. You can rewrite that as parentheses to the power of one third, right? So that is really the same as the first rule. Uh, anything with e, the power of e will be u. And usually, in most cases, when you have a quotient, the denominator will be u, but that won't always be the case, but I will go through some examples with you for that. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Do it, do it, do it. So I have the expression at the top of the screen again. Um, so we're looking for the integral of a product at where we have u and the derivative of u is also in that integral. So let's go down to this question down here. I can see that I do have the product of two things. And if we look very carefully, we can just see straight away that this is going to be u. Because not only is it to the power of 4, and I just said a moment ago, anything in brackets that's to the power n, that would be the value of u. So um, we can also see that if we let it equal u, then when we differentiate u, with respect to x, we would get 2x plus 3. And that is the derivative of this here. So what we do now is we're going to move the dx up. We're going to times both sides by dx. So try and sort of imagine we're keeping that together there. And this expression on the right here now matches all of this expression 
over here on the right. So we're gonna switch out those and replace it with du. So let's rewrite this integral, but now in terms of u. So the integral is u to the power of four du, and we're just going to apply the power rule for this, which was add one to the power, divide by the new power, and then plus c, because it's an indefinite integral. Uh, we won't leave it with u like that. What we'll do is we'll replace the u with what we originally called it, and that's x squared plus 3x over 5 plus c, and that's our final answer. Okay, moving on to example 3 and 4. So on the right here, I said that if you have an exponential function, then the power of that exponential will be the value for u. So on the left-hand side here, uh, we'll start with question 3. Um, we can see that there is an exponential function, and therefore then the power here will dictate what our u value is. So u is equal to 4x squared plus 1, and du be, uh, by dx will equal to 8x. Now there is a little trick that you need to do in this one, so watch carefully. Um, when we times both sides by dx, we will have du is equal to 8x dx. Now, in this question here, uh, I want you to look at what we have, and we have a dx, and we have an x, but we don't have an 8, right? And you can think of this as almost each one of these things is times together. So it doesn't really matter which li like order this is in, okay? I just want you to think of it, all we want is the x and the dx. So therefore, then, what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides of this expression by 1 eighth. So this is 1 eighth du. And times in this by 1 eighth, we will get rid of the 8. Okay. In other words, I'm dividing both sides by 8, but I like to think of it as timesing it through by a fraction. Therefore, then, that leaves x dx, and the replacement, then, will be 1 eighth du. So if we go back up to this question here, and we're going to, let's bring it all down. We're going to bring this whole thing down here. Uh, we want to rewrite that expression, but now in terms of u. So now we have um, the integral... And the x dx is gone, remember. Now we're left with 1 eighth du, so you could have 1 eighth here and du at the end. And then we have e to the power of u. Now, in the following questions, if this happens again, I will put that 1 eighth on the exterior of the integral sign, just so it reads as 1 eighth integral e u du. Just looks a little bit cleaner. And uh, that is one of the properties that you can do uh, if you're multiplying through um, an integral by a constant. So therefore then, this will just become 1 eighth, and when you integrate e to the u, it stays exactly the same, but then you divide by the derivative of the power, and the derivative of the power would just be 1, because we are just working in terms of u. So if it was e to the x, you'd just divide by 1. And therefore then that's plus c, and we're going to replace uh, the value for u, which was the substitution up here, 4x squared plus 1, that all needs to go back in now. So that will be 1 eighth e to the 4x squared plus 1 plus c, and therefore we have uh, integrated our indefinite integral now. I'm going to go back up here. Let's have a look at 4. So 4 is going to be done in the same sort of manner. So let uh, u is equal to 1 minus x squared. So du dx is equal to negative 2x. It's going to be the same sort of approach as above. We don't have a minus 2 in here somewhere. We just have an x. Um, so what we'll do is let's move up the dx first of all. So we have du equals negative 2x dx. And let's uh, divide or times through by 1 over minus 2. So when we times by 1 over minus 2, we'll have this. And that expression will reduce down to just x dx. This now matches our dx and our x. Remember, think of it as like a product all in a line, which doesn't really matter. A times B times C is the same as B times C times A. Um, okay, so we're going to swap that all around now. We're going to say that the integral uh, is half. Remember what I said, just going to put that straight away on the outside. E to the u du. So we're putting this in. Okay, so now we just have to integrate that. So we're going to get minus half, and the integral of e to the u is e to the u over 1. Remember, the derivative of u is just 1 uh, plus c, but we need to plug u back in. What we originally called that was um, minus half e, 
and it was one minus x squared. So one minus x squared plus c, and that is our next indefinite integral done. Okay, so example five, uh, it is a quotient. Um, we have a value on the bottom. Uh, looks like that would be called u, but if we just go over to my cheat sheet here, I said that if we have a fraction, most of the time, most of the time, the denominator will be the value of u. So let's just go ahead and use that then. So here we have u is equal to 3x to the 4 minus x cubed. So du dx is going to be 12x cubed minus 3x squared. Now that looks exactly like what is on the numerator. So that's helpful because if we now times both sides by dx, so we bring the dx up to the right hand side now. Um, what I want you to think about is that we do have this and sort of is multiplied by dx. So they're all in the same line on the numerator. So therefore then we can rewrite this expression as the integral. Now let me just put the, the fractional line and u first. Uh, I'm gonna switch out all of this with just du. Now what some people might just do is put du there, but that just looks a, a little odd. We never do that when we do integrals. We'll put the operation, the integral with respect to du at the end. So what goes on the numerator is just simply one. Therefore then if we integrate that with respect to u, we'll end up with natural log of u plus c. And don't forget you will divide by the derivative of this thing, but the derivative of this is just one. So we don't actually need that. So we'll just take that off. Um, and therefore we have almost finished. We just need to put the u value back in, which was uh, 3x to the 4 minus x cubed plus c, and there is another indefinite integral complete. Okay, so example 6 has trigonometric functions in. So which one would you call u as the substitution? Well, if you just look at the left-hand side here, what we really have is we have cosine x all raised to the power of 3. That's what co uh, cosine cubed is times sine x. So I can tell you now that this will be the substitution for u. On the right hand side it did say that anything that goes into a bracket with a power that value would be defined as u so that is just no different just because it is a trig function uh, we're going to do that now so let u equal cosine x now the derivative of cosine is negative sine x there and we're going to do exactly the same thing we're going to bring the dx up to the right hand side so times in both sides by dx essentially right and we can see now that this here is very, very similar to this, except there is a negative involved. We don't want the negative. We want to times both sides by minus one to get rid of the negative. That just becomes sine x dx. Now we have exactly the same as what is on the right hand side here. Remember, this doesn't, the sine x could be at the beginning of the operation. It just all is like a product in the same line. So, but we're going to re replace it with minus one du. So, therefore, then I'll just zoom out so you can see the whole expression happening here. We now have the integral of u cubed, uh, and then we're going to put this minus one du in. So, I'm going to put minus one at the beginning and du at the end here. So I'm going to integrate that. So we add one to the power and we divide by the new power and we have times minus one on the exterior uh, plus C cosine X all to the power of four. So we could just put four here over four and plus C. And there is our indefinite integral. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.